Hello again. So today we wanted to talk a little bit about stress and how how we manage stress. Uh, stress is something that's quite that's discussed quite a lot, really. Um, over the last few years, it's one of those subject areas that we that we all probably have some kind of connection with. Um, and stress can be a good thing. Um, it can help to um, motivate us to increase our memory, to enable us to get tasks done, um, to become become more productive. But also, it can it can lead to problems. It can lead to um, to poor health, um, especially over the longer term. So we wanted to talk a little bit um, uh, about stress today, as I say. And uh, I think initially, Annette's going to talk about what happens when we have uh, uh, the, the when we suffer from stress. What 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 goes on? So uh, Annette, over to you. It's, this is just very very simple. I want to keep it simple. Uh, there's no reason to go into great detail. If you think in terms of there being two systems in the in the body in terms of stress, then uh, one is the is known as the sympathetic nervous system. The other is the parasympathetic nervous system, and and they they work in different ways. The sympathetic nervous system, despite its name, is the one that gives you the most trouble if you suffer from long term stress. It's really really useful if you do have to flee from something in the times when we had big animals to run away from or if you have to fight if you have to actually respond to something immediately very very useful uh, it enables you to do that um, your parasympathetic nervous system is the one that's supposed to be engaged for most of the time so when you're not dealing with these one-off events and that's the one that allows you to rest fully which also enables you to digest food better and keeps you in a in a calm state other than when you need to be, and that's when the the sympathetic one jumps up again. So it's just those two those two forms of the of the um, of the the stress response really. One being a nice calm one, and the other activating when you need it. The problem we face today is that a lot of the time we're in the sympathetic mode, which isn't very useful to us because that means we're always being prepared for for fighting, for fleeing, for for danger is is what's going on and your body responds to that message coming from your brain and that's where grain's going to come in yeah so what might be the long-term effects of this kind of stress then or at least the stress of this uh the the effects of this long-term stress uh when we have it every day because um the the kind of stress that our our early ancestors had was 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 really only relatively short-lived so as Annette mentioned it was maybe just having to run away from that um, animal that was chasing us um, and shin up a tree or something um, and then once that that dangerous situation had, uh, had disappeared that the, the stress response dissipated and everything went on as normal um, a little bit like a, a, a duck comes out of the water and shakes its feathers and, and, and discharges all of that kind of energy and just carries on doing what it's doing um, so with the kind of with our modern day situation because people are suffering stress day in and day out in the normal course of their, their work their family situations um all sorts of reasons can lead to it um that stress response becomes chronic so our bodies release um uh, adrenaline and cortisol um and one of the knock-on effects of that is that it increases our levels of blood sugar um in the form of glucose uh, and that's basically needed to give us energy to so it's transported into our cells to give us energy through insulin which is also uh, released in our bodies now when that happens over the the longer term both um both uh, both both the insulin and also just blood sugar uh, and glucose too much glucose in our blood lead to us actually storing fat and therefore it's um, we, we start to put on weight um we also it also uh, affects our um, our the hormones that govern our satiety, um, the amount we we feel like eating, and our fullness, so that they also get uh, get changed, so that we actually are no longer able to kind of manage what we eat as easily. We maybe start to eat too much. We constantly wanting to uh, to 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 kind of reach for those foods that that give us that instant feeling of gratification. So it's kind of like a bit of a vicious circle that we start to put on weight. We feel worse. Um, we release more stress. It affects our sleep. It affects our our digestion. Um, and when we're uh, when we don't get enough sleep, we also um, we also are no longer responding as well to those different hormones that uh, control our appetite. So again, vicious circle. 
Um, so if we can actually become more aware of what's happening in our bodies and then manage it accordingly, then obviously we're going to be in a much better position. And why might this be relevant at the moment? So, uh, Annette, what, what would you like to say on that? Well, yes, I think it's really um, impossible to, to gauge the sort of stresses that people are experiencing at the moment because they're so varied. And in some cases, so very different. There may be um, much less work stress in some people's lives, although working via video may increase it for others. Um, but all sorts of other aspects of, of being locked down when, when it's not what you want uh, are, are likely to be stressful for people. And, and dealing with that is going to be challenging for, for anybody who, who feels that, that it is a, a problem to them. And in some, some cases, it, it's an, an enormous problem. There are people you can't see who you really want to be, be with. Um, I think it, it's fairly obvious to most of us that the healthcare workers are likely to be under immense stress. And, and it's worth remembering as well that they are dealing with a very stressful situation we, we know they've not been very well protected in, in the in the whole period leading up to now uh, that adds to their stress um, they're also dealing with stressed patients who are, are scared whether or not it's because of the pandemic that they're, that they're in the hospital or, or seeing the doctor or whatever uh, and they need to really be um, I think we need to, to look after them a little bit and be, be mindful of the, the fact that they are experiencing this stress and maybe help them as well to, 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 to feel a little bit calmer by calming ourselves down if we, could, if we can do that. I know that's, that's often a, a, big, a big request to make, but one of the things that, that we would always recommend is, um, is to cons consider meditation, which I've referred to already in the context of sleep. And the reason that is, is so beneficial is it gives your body that chance to be much more in that parasympathetic state. Um, it, it is an active process, if you like, of, of bringing that into play. On top of that, if you're practicing some kind of mindfulness meditation, you're likely to be increasing your own awareness. And that is really, really useful because you're becoming aware of when you get triggered by things and you might be able to step back a little bit before it gets out of control. And this is why people talk about things like breathing, because at that point, if you're able to take a long, slow, deep breath or, or several and calm yourself down, then it's so much better than getting into that shallow, fast breathing that itself is quite hyping. It hypes us up as well. So, so that's one thing that we can do. But I wanted to actually link back a little bit to the to the healthcare workers in the context of food, I think there was something you wanted to say there, isn't there? wasn't there? Because that's another aspect that we need to bear in mind. Yeah, I think uh, again. So there are certain foods that uh, that lead to uh, lead to us releasing more more cortisol, foods and drinks. Uh, so caffeine, for example, uh, alcohol, um, sugary foods, uh, the, the types of things that, um, as I mentioned earlier, that we tend to go for when we want that instant kind of uh, release, that that sense of comfort. Um, sometimes they're the foods that actually do 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 the most harm um, because they actually can increase our cortisol levels and and therefore um, it really it really behoves us to uh, to to think a little bit more about that and uh, and what what we are eating and again we we keep coming back to the the same um, the same subjects really and that's to look at eating as many whole foods as possible uh, focus on uh, fresh fruit fresh vegetables. Um, foods that haven't got lots of added uh, sugars, salt, um, unhealthy fats, etc. And I think that's really important. Uh, and uh, maybe just give it some thought. And also something that you, you mentioned yesterday was at the moment, we're all be feeling very, um, uh, we're, we're really being very kind towards the healthcare workers in general, which is, is the right thing to do, um, that they are under a lot of stress. And it seems that one of the things that we're doing, and, and some shops have been, I'm going to say guilty of this, their kindness has involved giving them all the Easter eggs that weren't sold. Actually, I'm not sure this is entirely kind for them because that, that they they really do need the best food available. They really need that. We need it as well. Um, I think it's probably incumbent on us to take a little bit more responsibility for, for feeding ourselves this way and not offloading uh, sugar and 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 fat laden um, confectionery on on people who 
who need to keep their energy up in a, in a, in a more healthy way. That that's we, we feel quite strongly about this. Yeah. I know it's a little bit controversial, but we do feel quite strongly about it. Um, was there anything else you wanted to say about? I mean, the, the other thing about the, the food, of course, is, as well as uh, that we know there's that tendency if you're feeling stressed to, to reach for the thing that cause, that that gives you comfort. So we we know how that works, but trying to break that again through becoming a little bit more aware of it rather than coming down hard on yourself and judging yourself and getting cross or even the other the other route which is oh whether well, I, I i can do this i can allow this if you keep allowing it all the time then it becomes it becomes too much the other way you you, you uh you don't sit in that nice middle ground of just being aware and making a little bit of progress each each day um so really it, it's it is the food uh, meditation is really worth learning or if that's not your style, then then maybe some yoga or you wanted to say something about exercise as well, didn't you? Yeah, that's well, really just key. exercise generally. I mean, it's also it's a really good uh, distraction um, if you are feeling like you want to have a, 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 a snack. Um, and uh, one way to do it is, is to avoid that is, is just going out for a walk or something and doing something else. And it can take that feeling away. Um, so just yeah re regular movement and also getting out in the open air um, it's a great way to reduce stress uh, if you're able to it seems to yeah there seems to be a lot of evidence yeah. to support that now doesn't there and it's so beautiful out there at the moment it's may it's yeah. beautiful could even go and talk to a few trees <laughs> the ducks <laughs> <laughs> okay so i think that's probably covered what we wanted to talk about yeah. today so um, just a little bit of inspiration yeah. okay. for trying to reduce this yes yeah. okay thank you thank you